Now, this is my type of video. This is definitely my type of video. One of my subscribers shared this video with me and I'm, I'm happy that he did. I want this video to be a reminder of just how important it is for Christians to stand for Christ now here on earth so that Christ will stand for us on the day of judgment as we stand before the throne of God. Now, what's the consequence for not standing for Christ here and now? Matthew 10, 33. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. That right there is one of the, probably my top five most terrifying verses in all the Bible. That verse is absolutely terrifying. And it's terrifying for those who will not stand for Christ now. Jesus is our Lord, and he demands that we stand for the sake of righteousness, just like this dear brother here did exactly that thing in this video. Okay to have different moms. It's okay to have different dads. You might have a mommy and daddy over here, a two daddies over here. I just have a question. Sure. Is, is, is it okay to, uh, to offend God? Okay, so this is story time for I, young children. I understand, not, I understand, but I'm just, I, so, I understand, but I just want to know because, your God well, 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 there's only one so God, there's only one God, so all I'm doing is asking, because these children are watching, because it's not okay that a, that a man dresses like a lady, the Bible calls it abomination, but listen, listen, your parents are going to be held accountable, okay, you're going to be held accountable for what you're doing to those children and what you're allowing those children to do. Okay, the Bible says a man dressed like a woman is an abomination. Okay, it's not okay to have a household with two women, as uh, two mothers. I'm sorry, it's a mother and a, and a, and a father. I'm sorry. This is sin against God. You guys are all guilty before God. Come stand before God. Repent. Turn to Jesus. But here's what I want you to see, believer. In Christ, you are that. If you were not that, you couldn't even call him father. If you were not that, you would know nothing of his spirit, of his presence. I'm not saying that when a believer becomes a Christian, they become perfectly righteous. What I am saying is this. When when a believer, when a Christian, when a person becomes a Christian, when they become a believer, Christ's righteousness is imputed to them. So that God now, you see, what you need to understand is Christ did not just die for you. Christ lived for you. He lived a perfect life for you. And he always, always, when he was living, he always heard, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He obeyed everything. He was always pleasing to the father. And when you believed in Christ, all your sins were forgiven by virtue of the cross. But you were granted, you were declared forensically, legally declared righteous before God in Christ. Amen. That's what you are now. Now, but let me let me share with you. this comes from Charles Leiter, a dear friend of mine that's really helped me in this area. You, the man, man has two problems. He has two problems. And that's all. One, he's under the condemnation of sin. Two, he's under the power of sin. That's the only two problems man has under the condemnation of sin. He's under the power of sin. When Christ died for you on that tree and rose again from the dead. And then when you believed in Christ, the condemnation of sin, that problem was gone forever. OK. You're righteous in him. You've accepted in him. God sees you as altogether lovely in him. Not one spot or blemish, he says, in him. So your condemnation problem was removed. But you don't just have a condemnation problem. Slavery to sin. So by faith, you were justified, which took away the problem of condemnation before God. But regeneration took care of the problem of the power of sin in your life. Those two things. And a lot of guys get off balance because they give, have such a low view of regeneration. When Christ died for me and I believed in him, I was justified in Christ through his death on that tree, through his perfect life, his righteousness imputed to me. I stand before God now and there is therefore now no condemnation. But also, I am no longer a slave to sin because the Holy Spirit has regenerated my heart, regenerated my life. I have a new nature and I walk in newness of life. So both of those problems now have now been taken care of. Now, it's not to deny that there's a struggle with sin, but there's a difference between struggle with sin and slavery to sin. 